Well, thank, thank you, Tom. That was very interesting, and I think something that a lot of us can, it sounds as though we can get our teeth into fairly easily and uh, fairly inexpensively. Uh, probably got most of the equipment, a lot of the guys have got most of the equipment lying around and to, to get going, so that's great. Thank you for that interesting paper. Right, Anton is up next. Uh, Anton um, is it, or 6ARC. Um, I think a lot of the guys here will know him from various uh, papers and practical demos and things he's done on the software-defined radio, SDR. Anton is going to be presenting a paper using, uh, interf uh, using artificial intelligence to identify satellite signals. Right. experiment to see if I can identify <coughs> radio signals and the main reason for that was if I can automate the process of getting um, SDR scan for instance on uh, a frequency band and it can identify the signal itself and then I could probably let it then select specific demodulation patterns for that. Let's say it's uh, recognizing it as a wideband FM sits on the FM demodulator. Maybe it recognizes it as an APRS signal, then linking the APRS um, modem automatically. So that's, that's what I wanted to do. And I started searching on the internet to see if there's any, anything that can do that. And I basically got uh, involved in this artificial intelligence uh, utilities, which I, which I found. Oops. So uh, looking on the internet, there's uh, uh, quite a few of artificial, artificial intelligence frameworks. And I looked at uh, which ones is available and which is used the most. And this is the, the list that I found. And TensorFlow is, is the one that's actually used most and is, is most, the most powerful uh, in its capabilities. Some of the other ones has got um, maybe advantages in certain areas of uh, artificial intelligence, but I think from a generic point of view, the TensorFlow one was the one that was mostly used and has got the most variety of capabilities. So uh, I, uh, I, I was looking for a way to do it, so I was thinking of using an SDR to take the IQ signal in, uh, and then recognize it and see how it will work. So I, I thought, okay, if I can do that, then the, the problem is solved. So I started uh, diving deeper into how does this artificial intelligence system work. And basically how it works is you uh, learn up front. You give it a sample of the actual signal that you want to uh, decode or identify. So what you do is you would um, uh, let's say you've got an APR signal, you would feed it an APR signal, you tell it to deep learn it. Uh, the disadvantage of this technology is that you need a lot of disk space, unfortunately. For a, for a, if you want 100% accuracy, you'll probably need 300 meg per identification signal. So you need quite a bit of storage, that's the disadvantage of it. So what you will do then is you would let the system learn the RF signal, and how it does it, and this specific um, uh, example that I've got here, is it actually takes visual uh, snapshots of, uh, of the actual uh, RF pattern uh, as, a, as a spectrum, a, a frequency domain. So it takes visual patterns of that, it stores the visual patterns of that, and then it learns afterwards the visual patterns of that FM or IM or uh, what kind of modulation it is. And the accuracy, most of the time, you can look at those things there, it's 98% accuracy. So it's really, it's working very well. It's the, the example code that I downloaded from the internet was uh, Python scripts, uh, which was not big, uh, big. It's, uh, it's probably 20 lines of code. 
And what this does, um, so firstly, if you don't want to identify your own signals, some people have already done or created databases with learnings of what they've done. So what you can do, if you can have a, a good internet capability, you can download their learnings of identified signals that they've learned before. You can apply it to your actual uh, code, and then you can obviously identify those those signals. So if you've got a new signal that nobody else has done, then you will do a learning and maybe share your learning so they can identify it as well in the future. So that's a, a community-based thing that we can then grow uh, and possibly get all kinds of modulations and demodulations and, and, and things to, to use. So, so this is the principle of how it works. So this, this was my hardware. Um, I used the laptop in, in my case, but uh, the code, the, the Python scripts runs easy on, on, uh, on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, the TensorFlow module is quite CPU intensive. So what I did is, uh, if you do not have a GPU, for the guys that doesn't know what's GPU, the screen cards of the, the game, the gamer screen cards, has got GPUs on it. The TensorFlow actually uses GPU capabilities. It's got a mathematical uh, uh, flow capability, which uh, the artificial intelligence requires. So like a Raspberry Pi or an entry-level laptop would not have a GPU, but if you've got a, like an i7, it might have a GPU, even a laptop. If you've got a PC and it's got a screen card, uh, a games card, um, then you'll have a GPU. So in my case, I offloaded the CPU capabilities onto Google's cloud. They offered the GPU capabilities and there was a little bit of a delay when you actually sent the signal to them, getting it back, it took about three seconds to actually identify the signal. But I mean, for normal use, uh, it might be okay. Uh, what Google does, they give you a free capability on a CPU for a certain amount. If you go above that amount, you have to pay. And if I remember correct, it's 60 hours of uh, free uh, um, artificial intelligence you can use there after you have to stop paying. So that's a thing that you can play around and you can maybe if you if you want to use it, it, it's quite easy to do. So uh, while trying to do this, I found this open source project called uh, CNN RTL SDR and basically you would uh, just download the framework and then it's got built in uh, Uh, it's got uh, CARAS, which is the database of uh, existing RF signals that somebody else has already identified. If you use the TensorFlow capability as is, it comes with some examples, I think wideband, FM, DMR, and I think one other one. So it will at least identify those three signals. But if you download the TensorFlow database, uh, oh, sorry, not the TensorFlow, the CARAS database, there's, uh, I think the 10 or 12 uh, signals there has already been identified. So you can use that as a base. Uh, you just <coughs> download the CARAS and then you change the path to point to the CARAS database and then <coughs> you can identify the other signals. So that's sort of uh, reasonably easy to do. Uh, so how does it work? I think I've sort of explained. Uh, the signal is digitized and then let uh, the framework learn the signal signature which is normally pictures. It's uh, sort of uh, like a GIF type of picture. Uh, they, they do save it in some binary format, so you can't really easily see it, but uh, th that's what the algorithm does. And then uh, you play it back to the algorithm later, and it will identify the signal for you. So this was basically what I had to do code-wise. Um, not much. For the Linux guys, you'll do exactly this on Windows, in a DOS shell. Um, you'll have to do this. You need Python, so you'll need to install Python, and you need version 3. Uh, then you'll run these few commands. Uh, probably not sudo if you're on a, on a Windows machine. You'll leave that front part out. You uh, install uh, these utilities that you will need. TensorFlow, there's the actual utility that's, uh, uh, that will talk to Google. Uh, Dongle and Crispy is just a utility. I can't even remember what it was doing. Then you'll unplug your dongle, plug it in again, and now you're ready to play. Uh, if you 
you probably need to install these libraries. This is libraries that you require to, do, to communicate to your serial port, RTL, SDR. Lip, this actually creates the images that it uploads. Lip tool, I can't remember what that is doing. Automatic is for compilation. So that's uh, dependency utilities that you need to install. And then you can run it. And uh, the, as easy as uh, run sudo python predict scan pi. It's scanning at this, the, the default um, utility just scans the TV channels to see if it can identify TV channels. So when you want to scan other frequencies, you will just say at the end minus F the starting frequency, minus F the end, end frequency, and then it will scan the band that you wanted to select. So by default, it will just do the TV ones if you, if you run this command without any, uh, uh, any parameters behind it. If you add the parameters behind it, it will actually scan the band. So you can let it scan the two meter band or whatever. And you'll see if you've let it learn APRS, it will tell you, yes, the APRS signal is picked up, yes, narrow band FM is picked up, and so on and so on. And then maybe we could uh, look at the specific satellite signals, for instance, um, some of the uh, modulation FSK, uh, AFSK, different board rates, you can learn all of them. So once it's identified, we can then let it kick in um, anything modulator we want. And uh, this way, we could actually build a generic application to scan a band and it will identify signals and then plug in the correct um, decoders for it. So this is uh, quite a nice uh, concept. And I think there's a lot of potential for this to grow. And I'm actually going to develop this further. Uh, maybe add a little uh, water flow, a waterfall to it so you can see the signals play around. Uh, then probably if we can get a database somewhere in South Africa where we can store all the learnings and make it available so people can share it, uh, that would be quite nice. So we can actually add more learnings that we've done for different type of signals. Uh, you can probably uh, uh, use it for SSB. I think, I'm not sure we're going to compensate for Doppler. I don't think it will be such a big problem because um, when you learn it, you will give it a signal which do not have Doppler. Uh, and the time when it actually recognizes the signal, it actually doesn't need a long time to actually recognize it. It's pretty quick. So I think as long as the Doppler is the, it's not too bad in that period it's recognizing it, we should be okay. So I think for the satellite signals, it should, should be okay. But um, I'm going to start adding some of uh, the learnings that I've done onto a database and we then can share it and see if we can get this. Uh, working locally. Okay, so uh, uh, this is the learnings that was uh, put into the database that somebody else has done. So this is the ones that you can download. It's got wideband, FM detection, TV signal, GSM, Tetra, DMR, and other. The other one just meant it couldn't recognize it. So that's the ones uh, that we've got the data for at the moment, and we can add both and, and add to it as we go. Okay, so uh, this is how to get that database I've just spoken about, the ones that we can recognize. We go to this uh, URL, we download it, we unzip it, and then we have to tell it to take that learnings and recognize it. Then you let it run through the learnings. It takes about 80 seconds to learn a sample. You let it run, it goes, takes that data, that three and a half it runs through it, it makes its own learnings. And once it's done its own learnings, you can then start decoding. So it takes a while, it takes 80 seconds to sample, so we'll get a beer or a coffee while you're waiting for it to finish. And then you run after it's done uh, Python train Keras Pi. It will take the database and load it in, and then you can start recognizing. So it's pretty easy to do it if you've got somebody else's database. Download it, this is the process you'll follow. And box your uncle. So this is basically, you'll see this uh, bar, it will just progress as it goes through the learnings. So if you've got multiple modulations, it will, will run through them. Uh, just, this is just uh, more detail how to do it. It's the Karos database that I was downloading. And I haven't searched around a lot. I'm, I'm sure there's other people that's probably done this before. So maybe we'll I'll publish where if I get more databases with learnings that, that from different uh, signals, so I'll, I'll start sharing it. I, I'll publish all this stuff on my blog, so you can download, play with it, and let me know if you get stuck. And this is sort of the process you will follow uh, to get it working. Uh, this is uh, one that I've done myself. I let it learn a wideband FM signal. 
and then I let it scan through uh, some bands that I know that's got the wire. So for instance, there was a radio station, there's a radio station, and it actually did detect from my own lens. So just to test the concept. And actually, uh, if you look at that uh, accuracy, uh, and this is pretty good. So that's 100% accuracy, that's 99.96. It was perfect. The other ones was actually all frequency. I just mixed up some frequencies to, to make sure that it actually does do what it needs to do. So yeah, that's it. So that's where I'm going to publish all the details. Um, I'm 90% there with all the documentation that I've done so far. So go and have a, go, go and have a look. I'll, I'll see if I can get an example working where we maybe take an IFSK modem and link it up. So if we detect uh, APRS, that will automatically decode it and actually give you the APRS. So you let it scan over the band to APRS anywhere in that band. It should pick it up and then start decoding. So that's the example I'm going to try and put up. So that's a, a basic start to start off with, and then we can expand it uh, going further. Any questions so far? I've got a video if I want to play it, but basically what you've seen here is exactly what's on the video. Um, Hans, I don't think I put it on the stick yet. Let me see. What? There we go. Okay, so, so uh, I did this um, video, uh, I think, uh, last week. While I was doing the artificial intelligence stuff, I'm going to six half minutes early. I'm going to uh, demonstrate how to do voice recognition uh, using artificial intelligence. Uh, I've got a program running on my laptop here, which will then take uh, this uh, SDR dongle connected to this antenna and uh, I'm going to use this uh, bow fan and to record or transmit voice uh, which will be received by this RTL dongle and it will then recognize my voice and write the details on the screen. There's a little bit of a delay because I don't have an, a fast enough CPU on this laptop and I'm using Google's uh, processes to do the recognition. So uh, let me see if I can get this working. There are six AIC testing one, two, three. Zulu Romeo 6 Alpha India Charlie is testing the artificial intelligence system. If everything works okay, we should see some text coming on the screen. And there is the first text that has been decoded. I hope the system works well. Although my deviation settings is not 100% uh, on the software itself, I will try and correct this to make this even better. So this is a simple way of controlling impossible satellite, controlling anything we want, where the system will recognize the voice and then do certain, uh, executing certain commands. So my next step would be to create code that will recognize certain commands and will then control certain parts of the system. I hope this has um, demonstrated how this system is working and uh, uh, this could have a lot of capabilities for a lot of control and uh, hopefully that will give us some in, uh, input in new development for satellites or repeaters or whatever we want to use it for. Okay, so, so that's another application where we can use artificial intelligence. Um, so we use the STR to, to um, control our stuff. I've actually, after this, I've actually linked it up um, with voice as well. So it was starting to back chat me a bit, uh, where I've actually uh, ident 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 identified them. So basically what I did is I, I said uh, hello satellite, and the keyword was hello satellite, and then it said back to me in uh, audio, hello, Anton, how are you, and certain things like that. So so that was the part that you could probably put in a satellite or a repeater or whatever you want to do or want to control your base station or whatever through through RF. So that's all uh, doable. So that code, I'm, uh, I've already, I think it's in GitHub already. So you can download and play with that as well. So if you want to experiment with that, so you can use a dongle simple setup 
flavor it, decode it, pop it up. Okay, thanks. Any questions? Uh, isn't it the same space recognition? Can't you use the same software? It is TensorFlow using the same software. So it, it's just you've got the audio part, you've got imaging part, and video part. So they've got the multiple in engines in, in TensorFlow, and you have to select which one you want to use for what you want to do. So you said the voice, picture, and voice Video. video. What's the difference? Um, in, in the video, I, I, I haven't played much with it, but if I understand, you can actually let it uh, recognize objects and the movement of objects in the video. Uh, I've actually got a live uh, system uh, played with the other day, and in the TensorFlow engine, there was uh, a few examples. So they give you example videos and things you can play with, and basically what it allows you to do is you can let cars drive down the street, and that was the video. And there was people walking there, and there was cars. And you tell it, only identify cars. And it will put a little block around the car, and it will follow it. And it will not follow buses. I don't know. I thought maybe it's close enough. It didn't follow buses, just cars. Then you tell it, OK, follow uh, humans walking. I just followed humans all the time. So that was the video part that, uh, that I was experimenting with. Then if you look at the, the pictures, they, the examples they have, they've got 50,000 birds in there, uh, all images mixed. And then they say, okay, identify the birds for me, and then you give it the criteria. If it's for the red uh, nose and the blue wings and whatever, you give it the criteria and you say, identify these birds, and it identified all those birds, not missing one. It was amazing to see that, and it did it in no time. So that was the example I had in there for, for pictures. Uh, audio, uh, it's just basically what we've done here. They, they've done some fancy stuff with audio. Um, I'm trying to think what was it. Um, actually forgot now, forgot. But there's some, some principles you can apply to audio. Oh yeah, uh, what I did the other day, I thought that would be interesting. I let it listen to um, 702 radio. I set the bandwidth 702, and as they were talking on the radio, I saw the text coming down. So now you can have this little thing on the corner of your screen, and you can see what the guys were talking about all the time. So a friend of mine has phoned me. They want to know, first application, they want to know if the advert is playing out every day. You can put this up, and it will tell you this advert is playing at that time. So you can tell it, go and search for this word. If it comes in the script, and this word is there, or this line is there, your advert is playing. I mean, that's, that's a simple example. So you can do probably the same uh, on a satellite. You can recognize your call sign. If your call sign comes in, it pops up. Somebody's calling you. So that's another example you can do. So there's a lot of things you can do, uh, do with this technology. OK. So yeah. last question, then we're going to break for Can you identify specific cell signatures, like a dog barking or a gunshot or I, I don't know, but I would imagine if you could do uh, the RF signal identification, I'm pretty sure you can do that because at the end of the day, it's, it's demodulated data that you actually recognize. So I, I, I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm sure if you can let it learn a, a dog barking, like, like I said, you learn it RF, you learn the audio, <laughs> then would recognize it afterwards. Maybe you let it learn. Ten different types of dogs. It might even tell you it's this type of dog. <laughs> so gunshot is a good example because you can maybe put it in the area, and if it gets a gunshot, it could give an alarm or something. Yeah, we take your question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wouldn't this be a good system to identify vehicles because they're so close together? Yes. You should recognize it. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you very much. Um, and Tom, always interesting as usual. What worries me is that some of the stuff he says just be this, just be that. Yeah. That would take me three days. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, anyway, um, thank you. Okay, guys, it's 10 to, 10 to 11. We're a little bit late. We're supposed to have a, a half an hour break for, for tea, but I'll, let's make it 20 minutes if you can be back at 10 past 11. Thanks. <laughs>